Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Redstone Arsenal, a tools, weapons, armors mod inspired and created by those of the COFH team. As you can see here, there's quite a bit to offer in this mod. It uh, gives you lots of, well, as I mentioned, tools and weapons, but they also have uh, several different side abilities, or at least most of them do. Uh, I currently have this set up here just to demonstrate that uh, you will need potentially some uh, other thermal expansion type items here that, uh, that I currently am using. Not that they are 100% required, but I, I highly recommend that you use them in conjunction with it because you're going to be needing to make some of the materials and use some of these to uh, obtain them in, in such a, a spectacular fashion. Uh, to start with, let me grab some of these here. I have some silver ore, gold ore, and some redstone. For example, I have a magma crucible here, which is a tool or a machine used to kind of liquefy things. If I put a bunch of uh, redstone in here, it's going to currently make it into uh, this, this tank here, and you'll see that it just finished. And if I use this bucket, uh, I can grab myself some destabilized redstone. Now there is other, there are other methods of obtaining destabilized redstone, and what I'm showing you right now is just how to create the ingredients in order to make all these uh, tools and armor. Because if you look at the recipes, they all require some kind of fluxed electrum ingot uh, and or a flux crystal, which both require, uh, well, a lot of gold, silver, and redstone, uh, at least in this manner. Now, if I've got a pulverizer over here, I'm just going to toss a little bit of silver and gold, uh, turn this thing on so that it's auto insert and extract, and it, it should pretty much take care of those. There we go. Just pulverize those, turn them into the uh, the respective gold and silver. Now, if I take a couple of these together, I can make myself Electrum Grit, as I have here. Now, if I take this to stabilize redstone, I can actually take some of this uh, Electrum Grit and turn it into Fluxed Electrum Blend. Or, alternately, I could take silver and gold like so and get the exact same result. Basically, it would be the uh, the same thing, whether you're using two Electrum Grit or uh, one of each of these. It's just that you're mixing them all together to make Fluxed Electrum Blend. You then use that in some kind of induction smelter or in, uh, like, I've got an immersive engineering example here, an arc furnace or something, mixed in with uh, some kind of sand, and you'll get Fluxed Electrum Ingots. So you do need a few different tools in order to uh, attempt to try and use this. And you can, of course, use those to make all sorts of different uh, items here. Let me let me bring it up here. Redstone. Uh, there we go. Uh, and you can see we've got Fluxed Electrum Blocks, which actually they are not just uh, aesthetic. As I mean, they do look a little bit funny. But uh, for one, if you stand on them, it, it hurts you. But if you're holding a tool, for example, if I grab this here, Flux Infused Helm, it has a certain amount of charge that it will hold. This one is empty, zero out of 800,000. If I hold it while standing on here, yes, I take some damage, but at the same time, it also starts charging the, uh, the tool. Same thing with the Flux Crystal Blocks. Uh, it will also charge that too, so therefore you, you have an alternate means of charging it rather than using something like an Energetic Infuser. Uh, now, in this case, I'm just going to kind of toss it in there. It'll It'll charge itself up with this setup that I have, and it'll come back out in this uh, chest down below. But that's besides the point. I was just showing you how to make some of the stuff. Now, of course, a uh, flux crystal is going to be to stabilize redstone, and some diamonds will get you some of those. Or, of course, you, you break it up, but you, you get kind of the idea. You could use a fluid transposer as well with a diamond and some uh, destabilized redstone. There are multiple ways of obtaining these, but the basic idea is flux crystals and uh, flux in electrum ingots. And you will probably need to turn them into other things as well, like nuggets, which of course you just put them in a crafting grid to get nuggets. Uh, your electrum gears, which are not anything fantastic. And your electrum plates, which I actually have a uh, compactor here. So if I put one of these in, it will then smash it into a fluxed electrum plate. That is one way of obtaining that. Uh, there, there may be other methods like a metal press using immersive engineering, etc. There are other mods that can uh, undoubtedly help you with achieving this. And then through that, you should be able to make almost all these other things because you've got fluxed armor plating, which is yet another ingredient. But it's just a bunch of plates around uh, flux crystal. You've got your uh, obsidian rods, which is some pulverized obsidian blaze powder, and your fluxed infused obsidian rod, which, of course, these don't do anything either. These are all just ingredients, all the stuff at, at, that I've shown you so far. But then once you've got those, once you've got those, you then have access to, like, your helmet, 
which as you see, fluxed armor plating, fluxed electrum plate, fluxed crystals. So now you know what's all involved in making these things. Uh, look at the, at the shield. It's just a bunch of ingots with a flux crystal. Uh, I've got a, a battle wrench, which uses the electrum gear, an obsidian rod, and ingots. Uh, you've got your different items here, like your shovel, your pick, your axe. So you're starting to see a pattern here. You've got a bow, which actually uses, uses string. It doesn't use like flux and fuse string or anything fancy like that. And then you've got your like fishing rod and stuff. Each one of these is really, really unique and, uh, well, spectacular in its, in its own way. Uh, let me just empty out this inventory, grab a few of these tools, and I will show you what they're all about. So yes, as you can see, there is quite an arsenal uh, before you, and it is extremely strong. There are settings that you can use when you are making these tools uh, and or weapons or armor, uh, at least some of these. And when you, if you see here, it says hold shift for details, that will give you a lot of the answers that you're probably looking for. Like it'll give you three armor, two toughness. You look on here or, or two toughness, three armor, my bad. I had it backwards. But if you hold shift, it will tell you the amount of charge that's left on there and so on. I have a flux cap uh, capacitor here. Now this one, of course, is creative. But if I have one of these on my hotbar, as before, I can hold shift, right click, and any item that I hold in my hand while that is activated will start charging. As you can see, the uh, flux infused helm is starting to charge up. I can hold it here and look at it and it's, it's going quite well. But I already have one, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Here we go. Now I have a flux infused shield and nothing in my hand. If I hover over this and hold shift, you'll see that it says press V to empower. This one here, it has some special abilities. It's not just for defense. You can use it for offense. Let me go find something here. I just head outside of my ranch house and uh, go check out. Oh, look, there's there's a creeper. That's, that's not exactly what I was looking for because using a shield against a creeper isn't going to be that effective. Oh, wait. Yes, it is. Uh, because if you look here uh, and you hold shift here, it says one flux damage. What does that mean? That is one damage that it will do armor piercing. It will it will just bypass armor. And if I press V, you'll see it, it lights up. It, it's now red. Uh, so here, actually, let me see V. And the idea is that uh, it, it will now become empowered and not just deflect things, it will also do more damage. So you can see six flux damage and it will do damage to entities that are attacking you. So that's really cool. And in this case, I could actually use it to defend, but as it's a creeper, I'm gonna use it to smack him and do a lot of damage. You can see there uh, a couple hits of this and I might be able to get him out, uh, take him out before he, he blows things up. So, I mean, it is just a shield, but it's, it's like a shield smash that I can do with this. Uh, on top of that, if I spawn something into the world here, I figure in this case a husk would be appropriate because he won't burn in the sun. Uh, therefore, I bring him into place. Hey you, how's it going? And I just block. Watch his health meter and you'll notice that in the top left corner, he's just going to kill himself because this thing is empowered. And uh, even if it's not empowered, I can press V, bring myself in another husk, and I can punch this guy, get his attention. It should do at least a little bit of damage. You can see it's just doing the one damage there, so it's just like a half heart each time. I empower it. I then start to uh, just do a lot more damage, you know, regardless of what hand it's in. And you do get like a little bit of a thunder sound anytime that you empower these. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's not overwhelming, and, and I don't think that it's going to uh, affect the, the whole server, though I, I could be mistaken on that. But uh, it... It's kind of a, a muffled noise, at least I have the volume uh, for weather effects turned off uh, or turned down so that you can still hear them. Now there are other options here. I That was just the shield. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep it empowered and on for now. Uh, yes, every time that you use it, if you look here, uh, it's 800 RF per use. If I hit V and then I go back, it's 200 RF per use. So anytime that it, any of these tools and items are empowered, it will use up more power instead of durability. So therefore, you can always just, uh, before I showed you, you can actually go in here, you can stand on one of these things while holding it, and you can charge it back up, and therefore it's it's maxed out now, so that's kind of convenient. Or, which does hurt though, uh, you can use something like an energetic infuser or whatever other uh, RF charging options you have. Now, if I go into something like a pick, it's going to be just like a diamond pick. Uh, but uh, you'll notice here that I, I'm looking at this wall here. There's a single block being highlighted. And yes, it mines pretty good. Not bad, right? It, it's all right. But if I empower it, 
you'll notice that I now mine three blocks tall in a single strip. So therefore it can be really uh, useful. If I target it on the ground, I can mine out this entire floor relatively quickly. And this is just a pick. It's uh, just as good as a diamond pick. It's very nearly as enchantable as uh, gold. Actually, all these items, uh, all the tools and uh, armor are just about as uh, enchantable as gold. And they're all just as durable, if not better, than diamond. So keep that in mind. Now that I have that, let's unempower that, get it off the hotbar. I have a flux-infused axe. Guess what that does? It chops wood. It also will do some serious damage. Uh, now, if I use this on the tree, you know, so it's it's nothing really fancy there. I can oh, it chops down the whole tree. So it is definitely going to give you a benefit because even if I turn it off, it's just going to chop a little bit at a time. If I do this a little bit more, so it's it's really going to start taking out chunks in an area and kind of uh, chopping up trees at the same time, and helping to eliminate them very quickly. Yes, I'm going to decimate this town as I do this video, so be prepared for that. All right, here's the next, uh, the next one here, the Flux Infused Omni Wrench, which actually, it, it's relatively unique. It, if you remember the Crescent Hammer from most of the, uh, the other stuff there, you have the option with this. Uh, let's see if I can actually... There we go. Uh, apparently there was a rendering glitch, but uh, if you use a Crescent Hammer, you can change the facing of blocks. So that's kind of interesting, you know, whatever it is, you can change the facing around to suit what you like. That's what the Flux Infused Omni Wrench does as well, but it also has another effect, uh, though you'll want to be careful not to use it on doors or, other, or at least other items around. If I get myself a sheep, just spawn one in here, bring it down, and use this Omni Wrench on him, it actually doubles as a pair of shears, <laughs> which is pretty good. Now, just about any of these items, as I mentioned before, will also have that uh, use power instead of durability. Uh, the problem, yeah, see, I just I just used the, the wrench on the door, and it's trying to realign the door in a different way that I don't want it to be. So try not to use those on doors if you can avoid it. But uh, obviously, if you try and access a chest, you're going to lose the face of the chest. But uh, the, the, the uh, thing is, with these, you can actually enchant them. Now I have, uh, and it's any of these tools, weapons, items, armor, whatever. If you put this in here, a little bit of uh, some lapis, you could then put, of course, in this case, I've got unbreaking on here, unbreaking, holding, holding. How is this an omni wrench, let alone a battle wrench, going to do something like holding? I, I don't understand. Uh, the I th that's pretty much going to expand the amount of power that this thing can have. So it's uh, increasing its durability before you'll need to recharge it again. Uh, so that's what the holding option adds to just about any, any of these tools and armor. So uh, we've covered a few of these items now. Let's go into the Flux Infused Battle Wrench, which is kind of like a step up from the regular wrench. Uh, it's It does the same thing. It, it won't it won't shear sheep. Uh, sadly, our, our sheepish friend over here, let, let me get a, a, a friend for him. If I, if I right click, nothing happens. I'm just holding my shield up because this is more of a, a wrench and a, uh, a, a mace. So it's, it's pretty good. And yes, you can empower it. Uh, you cannot empower the flux infused Omni wrench. It does not give that option because it's, it's just a wrench, but the recipe for the infused battle wrench is going to involve that gear. So that is something to uh, be of note. It's not very major, but just a little. Uh, heads up there. And what this does is it will take it from here. Let me actually show you right now. It says six attack damage, one flux damage. So that's six normal damage or three hearts and a half a heart that will go through armor. So a total of seven attack damage. Now, if I empower this, it then does six attack damage as before. And the flux damage goes up a lot. Of course, it's going to use more RF per hit, but it will now do eight or er, 14 attack damage total eight of which will just ignore armor. So it's a really good tool. It actually will attack uh, similar to a, um, uh, let's see if I can bring a bunch of sheep here, uh, similar to a sword. So you get a swiping effect, which is pretty good. Uh, and of course you can still use it to, you know, crit enemies from above. It's just a really good all around tool and weapon in one. So you don't have to carry around your crescent hammer anymore. But with that being said, we also have the flux infused sword which uh, by itself does seven attack damage. Now, let me actually uh, take this one, undo that uh, empowerment. This one does seven attack damage as well. 
basically they look the same, right? So it's it's something to consider there. Now if I empower this one, it's going to do 16 attack damage. So it is going to kind of outclass the uh, Battle Wrench slightly. Uh, and it also has that uh, swiping effect. Uh, let's see if I can... There we go. Just take that guy out. No problem. <laughs> Break this torch, put it back down so we can get a little bit of lighting in here. There we go. Little little volunteer. And of course you can do crits like you can normally as well. Now that's not all for the weapons. There are still plenty more to go. I have, for example, a flux infused hammer, which does 11 attack damage by itself, though it is very slow. Swing. Oh, that's so slow to swing. It's it's slower than a vanilla axe. So therefore. You're going to want to empower it. By empowering it, it does make it attack faster and do 16 attack damage. But that's not all, my friends. Yes, this is a hammer and is going to be very good for just smashing your enemies in the face. But you can also use it in another, uh, well, in another way. It will also mine out stone in a 3x3 three three fashion uh, if I don't have it empowered. So right here it'll do kind of a 3x3 three three area allow me to get into uh, an underground area so I can better demonstrate this. And in order to do that, I have my flux infused shovel and a flux infused pickaxe. Uh, now these are going to help me get down there a little bit quicker at least. So the shovel, of course, just like a diamond shovel, it's going to be pretty good, really enchantable, etc. But uh, if I empower this while I'm holding onto it, it's going to actually dig in a line, which is really, really good. Really good. Uh, so even if I aim like this, it'll like dig in a in a row. So that's pretty nice, uh, if I do say so myself. And therefore, I can make myself a stairway down. Uh, I can do the same thing with the pickaxe. It's going to do the same. Remember, it, do, it does a line of three. So once I get this set up, I feasibly could uh, just like dig my way all the way down here, and then turn this on, and just start digging my way a, a nice stairway going down. Or I can switch over to my my hammer, my trusty hammer, which is going to do a three by three area, just like any tinker's hammer would. Of course, it's it's not good with with dirt, as most tinker's hammers are, but it also has another option. Now you see here, it's highlighted a three by three area. If I press V, it empowers it, and then does a five by five area. So it, it will mine out about twenty five blocks at a time. You can see it's just demolishing the landscape. It's it's quite impressive, uh, if I do say so myself. It will use up a bunch of power upon using that, uh, but I, I currently also have my uh, creative flux capacitor running to keep these things powered up, just so that I don't run out of power while I'm demonstrating. But if I just kind of mine a bunch of this, you'll start seeing that the, uh, the durability there has gone down a little bit, but not to worry, you can always just charge it back up with the flux capacitor in your inventory, or your own energetic infuser or other charging options. Now on to more simpler things. I've got a lawn problem here, uh, besides the fact that I just dug a giant hole and took out my neighbor's house. Hey, if I use this, a flux-infused sickle, I can grab a little bit of stuff. I can empower it, yes, and I can grab an even bigger area of junk and, and kind of mow the lawn really quick and in a hurry. No, no more waiting to get stuff. It, it works on crops. Not a problem. <laughs> no, the... <laughs> The uh, the thing here it's it's not as a uh, not as a offensive uh, damage wise it still does eleven attack damage don't get me wrong that's really good uh, but when I unempower it it's down to six which is still pretty respectable but it is very expensive of course you've got your your different uh, recipes here as you uh, saw before now one more before we get to the the final and best one in my opinion the flux infused fishing rod now this by default without even empowering it, has like a, a, a luck of the sea and a, a lure one by default built into it. So you're automatically going to be getting more drops quicker as you're, uh, you know, you, you get your, your fish or other things like that. You can already see I'm getting these things really quick. Now, if I empower it, it's going to increase that by threefold uh, and, and really boost up your abilities to gain fish, loot, drops, etc. like that using this so that you don't you don't have to spend your entire day fishing <laughs> or at rather standing here watching the bobber rather than actually catching the fish so it's a really really good fishing rod that's rechargeable and of course as before all the tools and weapons and items can uh, can have their their uh, you know current power level increased just by uh, 
having a little bit of... I, I hear a zombie. Just by having a little bit of uh, uh, a holding enchantment used. Plus, of course, you can use it to pull entities short distances as well, which is just always entertaining. All right, and now we have the best for last. The flux-infused bow and quiver. Now, you don't have to have a quiver. But just know that uh, even if I take this shield off, I'm, I'm clicking, nothing happens. If I have some arrows in my inventory, it will use those arrows, uh, just as before, and it will use a little bit of uh, uh, power, I believe, if I actually use that. There we go. No, it doesn't actually use the power. I thought that it did. My, my apologies on that. But it will, it will empower this thing if you press V, just like before, and it will double the damage that it does. Now, if I shoot an arrow, uh, it, it will be a physical projectile. It will actually go up. It will come back down. You can it's barely still see it. There it is. Zoop. There we go. So now here's where the difference is. If I go over here and pick up this quiver, get rid of the arrows. I don't have any arrows in my inventory now. I know it's filled with a bunch of junk, but I don't have any uh, arrows. I can use this to shoot red power. It's Now, if I just kind of do a, a really slow one, you can see it's actually kind of like a, a matrixy shot. It's pretty entertaining, actually, but they will go in a straight line, so you don't need to worry about... You know, there we go. And uh, these are not very powerful because I'm just kind of like tapping the arrows. But if you hold it down, it will, of course, go much faster than your normal arrow would because you're shooting energy. You can see that the uh, power is being used from the Flux infused quiver. Now, this is where things get interesting because at the moment you see my bow is uh, already doing double damage because it's empowered. Now, the quiver can be empowered as well, and boy, does it it, it have a great effect. It it will in increase its abilities uh, even further. Uh, now, no, it will not damage the landscape. It will destroy floating entities. You saw that there there's some carrots over here. So it'll destroy those things, it will destroy uh, picture frames and whatnot. Uh, so be careful where you use this, but it is a really good way of cleaning up uh, a lot of grass in the area. Plus it does a lot of damage in that area. So if you have a lot of uh, mobs nearby, you can easily, you know, clear them out. I mean, you're just increasing your damage, you're doing a lot. It does use up a lot of power. You can see here already it's 26 to, or 262, 400. So it's, it uses a lot of power for this. <laughs> But as before, you can still do your slow motion shots as well if you really want to have fun with it and, and enjoy just like dotting the landscape with lots of arrows. So, and yes, you can you can put all sorts of enchants on these things. Like I said, this, these things enchant really, really well. So you put something like multi-shot on a bow, you're going to have sick amounts of damage coming your way or rather going towards other people. <laughs> so yeah, that that's definitely something something to have a lot of fun. So if you are looking for a new set of really OP, difficult, or at least somewhat challenging to make armor, tools, weapons, whoa, and <laughs> be Im impervious to your own explosions, uh, <laughs> then this might be the mod for you, which uh, it, it uh, works together with a few of the other COFH mods. So don't be afraid to uh, kind of check out the list of other mods that are required for this to be installed. And I recommend you use any of the thermal foundation, thermal dynamics, thermal expansion, all the thermal mods. Uh, they go really well with this and often are included together. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, spread the mischief to others who think they'll enjoy this content too. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.